Something's on my heart. Uh, Leviticus chapter number 7. Excuse me, chapter number 14, verses 1 through 7. Glad to have Brother Justin and uh, his family with us this morning. And uh, thank God for a good time of fellowship. And the uh, uh, Lord laid this on my heart uh, a few days ago. And uh, preaching from the book of Leviticus sometimes and uh, it's not one of the easiest things to do. And uh, these scriptures were on my heart. Uh, A.W. Tozer wrote a book one time, Born at Midnight. And said that whole book was born in one of the darkest hours of his life. Said in a time of great despair. And it seemed like the world had overwhelmed him. He said that book was born in that midnight hour. And he gave hope to others and told him how that he overcame. Well, God gave me these scriptures in the midnight hour. Not necessarily a dark, gloomy time, but in the literal midnight hour, but in the morning when the sun come up. Hey, man, just God just spoke a word to my heart. I'll try to share it with you today. Verse number 14, in chapter 14, verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper. In the day of his cleansing, he shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp. And the priest shall look and behold if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper. Then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean. And cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds, now listen, one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. And for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. Now I want you to imagine what's going on here. That priest is cleansing or performing a ceremony and other things will be done that will eventually... Pronounce this man clean that's been unclean. He's been shut off from society. Any person that comes in contact with him must cover their nose and their mouth and cry, unclean, unclean. And this man here, the Bible says that that priest takes that hyssop and that wood and he dips it in that blood of that slain bird. And then he takes that living bird and pours that blood over him or dips him in that blood also. And the Bible said he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times. And shall pronounce him clean. And shall let the living bird loose into the open field. And shall let the living bird loose into the open field. The other night when God laid these scriptures on my heart, some things came immediately to my mind and I began to research them. Uh, but uh, uh, early, early Saturday morning, amen, God just revealed to me something I, I haven't seen before. And I'm going to try to preach it to you this morning. I'll read you something that I, I wrote down. And this was in night, th- October of 1347. October of 1347, years and years ago. It was said that China, one of the busiest trade routes in that time, that in October of 1347, an Italian merchant ship returned from a trip to the Black Sea, one of the key links in trade with China. When the ship docked in Sicily, many of those on board were already dying of plague. Within days, disease spread out through the city and surrounding countryside, and I witnessed tales of what happened. Realizing what a deadly disaster had come to them, the people quickly drove the Italians from their city. But the disease remained, and soon death was everywhere. Fathers abandoned their six sons. Lawyers refused to come and make out wills for the dying. Friars and nuns were left to care for the sick. And monasteries and uh, uh, covens 
were soon deserted and they were stricken. Bodies were left in empty houses and there was no one to give them a Christian burial. The disease struck and killed people with terrible speed. The Italian writer said its victims often ate lunch with their friends and dinner with their ancestors in paradise. By the following August, the plague had spread as far north as England, where people called it the Black Death. Because of the black spots it produced on the skin, a terrible killer was loose across Europe, and medieval medicine had nothing to combat it with. In winter, the disease seemed to disappear and lay dormant. But each spring, the plague attacked again, killing new victims. After five years, 25 million people were dead, the cause being the Black Plague. Even when the worst was over, smaller outbreaks continued not just for years, but for centuries. The survivors lived in constant fear of the plague's return, and the disease did not disappear until the 1600s. And can you imagine? Can you imagine the death toll? I mean, my mind cannot imagine 25, 25 million people that could die. I mean, think about that. In just a few years, 25 million people had lost their lives from one of the greatest or one of the deadliest plagues that has ever been known to man. Amen. It said it came in, and within seven days, men would begin to, in the first few days, would begin to experience swelling under their underarm or around their necks, and next they would begin to be nauseated, and fever and chill would set in. And so in a few days, dysentery would come. And the body would become dehydrated. And after seven days, they would eventually die an agonizing death. Amen. The writer said that men left their children. Oh, what a horrible scene that must have been. Amen. That a man would leave his son. Amen. Some of the doctors back in that day said if you stood there when that man closed his eyes in death, amen, that he would transfer that plague, amen, from himself to you. Amen. Those black spots cover the body. Amen. That oozed uh, with infection. Amen. Their eyes became sucking. Amen. Black around their pupils and they eventually died. Amen. No medicine known to man in that day. I said no medicine known to man in that day. Amen. Could take care of that plague. And even today there's methods of prevention. Amen. But there's not actually a cure. Amen. Or a hundred percent cure for the black plague. Amen. Or the bubonic plague or black death. Amen. Can I tell you a plague is a death. Amen. A very, very wicked thing. Amen. Pestilence and disease that comes in. Amen. Contagious outbreak. I've seen cholera. I've heard about cholera in Panama. Amen. Among the Indians. And within days, hundreds of people are dead. Amen. Mothers, cradling and children are trying their best amen, to keep them alive. And they die in their their arms. Amen. But the black plague will never compare in all its horrible, amen, horrible accounts in all its worst days to that epidemic called sin. Amen. Can I tell you one of the greatest, amen, or the greatest killer of mankind is not the black plague. It's not HIV. It's not man against man. But it is sin. The Bible said for the wages of sin is what? Amen. He is dead. Amen. Ezekiel said, Amen, that a soul that sinneth shall surely die. Oh, for all have sinned. The Bible teaches us and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. Sin. Since the beginning of time, it has no respect to person. 
It don't care what house it ravages. It don't care how old, amen, the recipient or the victim, amen, that falls prey to its evil clutch. Amen, all its needs is someone willing to give up, amen, and choose that path of destruction. Amen, don't care how long you've been married. Don't care how long you've sat on a church pew. Amen, you know, sometimes we think a sin only affects that drunkard and that prostitute. Amen, that one that's never heard the gospel message. I read about a man named Samuel. And the Bible said that Eli was the priest and Hophni and Phinehas had polluted the temple and ere the life of God went out. And the Bible said that Samuel was called by God. And Samuel didn't know his name. I haven't studied it out all the way, but the Bible said that Samuel knew not the Lord. Amen. Right there in the house of God, being trained up by the high priest, and he knew not God. Amen. Can I tell you this morning, it's not only those that have not heard the gospel message, it's not only those that live in heathen nations, but it's those that sit right on our church pews that have been infected by the plague of sin. Amen. Imagine a man. He's got leprosy in his body. Amen. First a spot comes up and he must go to that priest and the priest will judge him clean or unclean. Amen. When that pronunciation is made upon him and the priest cries unclean. Amen. That man is sentenced to exile. Can I tell you sin is separating man. Amen. Not only from family. Not only from friends. But it separates a man from God. Amen. Brother Bruce, can you give me a little more here? Oh, amen, I'm telling you. Can you imagine what happened in that garden when Adam, amen, and Eve sinned and had that great fellowship? But you know what came? Sin. And it drove a wedge between man and God. Amen, because God will not look on sin. Amen, He hates sin. Amen, He abhors it. Oh, amen, and sin has came into the life and hearts of many. Amen, just like that black death. It's entered homes. Uh, amen. It's taken young men that were raised uh, in hornless homes uh, and it's driven them out uh, into death and eternity. Uh, lost and undone without God. Uh, amen. I'm telling you. Uh, amen. We think we're immune to it. Uh, but you lie uh, and deceive yourself uh, if you say you have no sin. Uh, oh, can I warn us this morning? Uh, there's a plague more awful than leprosy. Uh, amen. There's a plague uh, amen that's taken more lives uh, than black death ever could. Uh, and it's a plague of sin. Amen. You know the horrible thing is that these people didn't choose to die. Amen. They didn't walk around and say, I want the black plague. Amen. I want the bubonic plague. I want black death. Amen. But many, amen, all, all that have died because of the wages of sin have chosen that path. Amen. The Bible said that broad is a way that lived to destruction and many there go in their hand. Amen. But there's a straight and narrow way that men have for Forsaken. Why? Because they love pleasure and they gratify the flesh more than they love God. But can I tell you, there's a preventative. Amen. I read somewhere to prevent the black plague. One of the first things you must do is manage your environment. Amen. Get things out of your life and that surround you that can cause you to be infected. Amen. Amen. They did all kind of things. Uh, they burned their clothes. Uh, amen. They even burned down homes that had the black plague. Uh, amen. Some said it was airborne. Uh, amen. Some said, uh, amen, that it was caused by touching the clothing of others. Uh, but you know what the cause, uh, amen, of the black death was? Uh, I'll tell you what it was. Uh, amen. It was rats and fleas. Uh, amen. Those fleas bit the rats. Uh, and then they bit the people. Uh, and the disease was transferred. Amen. Those Chinese thought they had it. They'd heard about
about that black plague. They heard about that death. Amen. It had been noised abroad that men were dying. Amen. That that plague was on ships. And when those men came in, amen, that fleet began to come in the harbor. I read up to one man that said only a few men survived. And they were dying. And soon to die. Amen. They took their ropes upon the upon the dock and they tied off. Not one man walked down the gangplank. Not one man stepped on that soil. And when it was found out, amen, that they had the black death on board. Amen. Brother Justin, they severed the ties. Amen. They cut the ropes and they sent them back out to see to die. And they thought that everything was all right. Amen. But those rats scurried down the ropes and they went into homes and houses and they begin to infest and they begin to pollute. Amen. The homes of millions. Amen. Can I tell you? It's the little foxes. Amen. That stole the vine. We drive away the ship of sin. We drive away what we think to be the death. But bitterness and envy. Jealousy and strife. Those hidden sins of the heart that no man knows about. I said there's death in the house. And if we're not careful, it'll not only take us out, it'll take our families, it'll take our children, it'll wipe out a church if we're not careful. Amen. So they begin to tell them, Amen. You got to get educated. You got to change your environment. That's good advice. Amen. That's good advice right there. You got to change your environment. But not only that. Amen. You got to have prevention. Amen. They call it prevention therapy. You know what that was? Amen. Killing the rats. Getting rid of the fleas. Amen. Make sure you had an atmosphere where they didn't want to get. Amen. Make sure you had a place. Amen. That they wouldn't want to come into. Well, Brother Jim, how can we get rid of sin? Amen. How? Amen. How in the world can we create an atmosphere? Oh, amen. Oh, they would get rid of this plague. A Solomon saw, no doubt, and heard what happened to his father. And he himself fell in sin. But Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, and said there's a way that seemeth right to man but the end thereof is destruction. He said there's a way that man amen, thinks it's going to be alright but if they could just see amen, they stand on that shore, they stand on that pier and say you're not coming in the harbor. Amen I'm not going to even let you throw your ropes. Amen to towel. I'm not getting near you. There's death on board. Amen. Drive away the rats. Drive away the bark. Drive away the ship. Amen. For fear that death might come. And I tell you, anything unclean, anything that's against God, anything that stands between me and Him, I must drive away. I said, I must drive away. Amen, David. I wonder sometimes, amen, if David wrote this after he sinned. Amen. Or maybe before and didn't take heed to his own advice. Oh, but me and Brother Neil have been talking about Psalms 137, 139. Oh, one of my favorite Psalms. One of my favorite Psalms. David writes and says, How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God. Amen. How precious are thy thoughts unto me. Amen. All of a sudden, David stops. I was telling TJ and them last night. It was like David stopped and pauses, Brother Justin. Amen. In the Bible, you read that Psalms 139 and 17. And it says, How precious are thy thoughts unto me. And all of a sudden, Sister Jean, it stops with a period. And David cries out with an exclamation point. Oh God! How great is the sum of them! Amen. Seems like like David gets excited when he thinks about God is thinking about him. But it goes down to verse 23 and he says these words, Oh, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. Amen. God, search my inner thoughts. Search the seat of my affections, my own heart, and see if there's death. See if there's plague. And David said, just don't Show me, but lead me in that way. He 
eternal. I'm telling you, we must search our hearts. We must ask God to examine us. And we must examine ourselves. And in marriage, I said, prevent death from sinning. And then those rats had already gathered. You know what they thought? People begin to die. And they said, in the winter, the plague would stay. But in the spring, it flare up again. You know what people say, the scientists? They said because the fleas died when it got cold. It became dormant. But as soon as weather started heating up again, as soon as people got back off the guard, hey man, here they come. And begin to spread death. Oh, hey man, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I can't imagine. I can't imagine my boy dying. I can't imagine. Brother Justin. And having to turn my back because I know I got family. Hey, Amen. I know I got family I got to take care of. And if I stay there, I'm going to catch what is God. Hey, Amen. Then we're all going to be in trouble. I can't imagine what it must be like. Hey, Amen. For a mom or a daddy. Hey, Amen. To stay in a funeral home. Hey, Amen. To sit down in a church pew of a young man or woman. Hey, Amen. Or children to sit and watch a mom and daddy be wheeled out. Hey, Amen. In front of a congregation. And the preacher gets up with sad countenance. Amen. No words of encouragement can he offer. Amen. No words of hope of that eternal land of promise. Amen. Can he give to those in attendance. Amen. They know the story of how God moved. How conviction came. But they never did anything about the rats, so to speak, or the fleas in their life. And now a lifeless corpse lays before Amen. Untold hundreds while a soul burns in eternity, lost and undone without God. Amen. Can I tell you this morning, I can't afford to let anything in. I can't afford, amen, to let anything in that could cause me to lose my children and my family. That's why I must prevent it. I said that's why I must do all I can to prevent it. Environmental management. That's why we don't go places and do things everybody else does. Amen. That's why I put them in a structured environment. You know, a lot of folks think I'm hard because I preach on being faithful to the house of God. I'm just trying to get you in an environment. Amen. A drive away sin. You hear me? A drive away sin. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a lot of places, TJ, you can find help. Amen. I know you can find it on a street corner if God moves there. You hear me? I said, I know you can find it on a street corner. Amen. But I've never found help like I have in the house of God, around God, godly people. Amen. That were praying and seeking the Lord on my behalf and seeing what I didn't see. Amen. They saw the rodents were coming in. Amen. They saw the spots upon my body and they begin to cry out for God. Amen. I don't want to leave you there this morning. Amen. That man came with leprosy and he was driven out. In the exile. Amen. They talk about nowadays. There's leprous camps. And people work among them. But everybody there was a leper. Amen. There was no priest that came on Sunday and told them that there was a better way. Amen. There was. Amen. No organization that came with humane efforts and gave them packages. They were left to fend for themselves. And no. Amen. Many of them died. But there was a cure. Amen. There was a cure for some. Amen. That cure for leprosy. And that priest would call him, the Bible said, he would take hyssop. He would take cedar wood. And he would take a live bird. Amen. Two live birds. He would slay that one bird. Amen. And the blood would begin to run. Mingle with water. Can you imagine the mess? Amen. That man would stand in front of him, brother. 
a kneel. And the Bible said that that priest would dip that hyssop, amen, that cedar wood, and that bird in the blood of a dead bird, and he would sprinkle it upon that leper, amen, seven times, amen, seven being the number of completion, amen, and he would call him clean, and his clothes would be burned, his head would be shaved, Here, come on now, I'll get to that in a second, but I'm telling you there's a cure for sin, amen, let me point you to a place called Calvary, amen, a dirt away with the plague, amen, the Bible said for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, amen, there's a cure for sin, and that's the blood, without the shedding of blood, I say without the shedding of blood, what can wash away my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again, nothing but that blood of Jesus, oh precious, here's that flow, that makes me wise well, I can't wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. All that ceremony. Amen. All that ceremony. If you saw it, you probably thought, what in the world? Amen. But can I tell you, there was a man. He saw all the plague of sin. He saw how it ravaged man. Well, not only ravaged him, it caused death. You know what he said? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Him that believeth, him that believeth is not condemned. But him that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed. Him be the only but God's Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Amen. That men love darkness rather than light. Amen. Because their deeds were evil. Amen. Everyone that doeth evil hateth light. Neither cometh to the Life. Amen. That their deeds might be reproved. But him that doeth truth, him that doeth truth, cometh to the light. That his deeds might be manifest. That they are wrought in God. I'm telling you, there's a light that shines in outer darkness. There's a light that shines in times of trial and lets you know there is light. You don't have to die. Amen. You don't have to go. You don't have to be plagued. You don't have to be infected. You can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. I was, I was praying about that. Oh, man. My heart was so heavy. And early, early Saturday morning, there's a scripture on my heart. I was walking, I was praying. These verses over and over again in my mind. Felt like the Lord's trying to show me something. Neil, C.W. C.W. Bevington said one time, said after he prayed 18 hours, he finally got past self. Said you hear from God. Oh, it took me a while to get past me. Oh, DJ, by the time sun was coming up, I touched heaven. I was sitting there, Sister Marcia. I was watching that water flow down that river. And all of my birds, if Seth had been there, he probably could have told me. But I watched it. It looked like, I reckon, a red bird. It was all red. Brother Justin, you know how the birds are singing when the sun's coming up. It's pretty. And all right, it's like mist falling. Beautiful. I watched that red bird as he flew down that water, right in the shallow part. And Sister Martha, he'd take that water and he'd throw it over himself. That he was drenched. You know, some birds have to get in a little bath out here. That boy had a whole river. Amen. God taking care of him. 
What a bathtub. He didn't want a bathtub. That's what I thought. I thought, man, that boy's got it better than anybody. God's going to feed him, provide for it. All of a sudden, I was sitting there. I'd never seen a bird come this close to me. Right over my head was a hanging limb. And that red bird came right to me. And there he stood. That water, he wasn't even, you know, he shook himself off, he's still wet. And if you hadn't known better, he looked like he's covered in blood. And all of a sudden, I begin to imagine. Mama, will daddy ever come home? Son, daddy's got leprosy. He's unclean. Mama, would daddy ever come home and play with us again? Son, he can't even step into the house. How many mamas? How many daddies have had to bow their head and say, I don't know if they ever come back. I was praying about lost people. I was praying about Tommy. I thought, Lord, I've seen him when he's prayed through. And I've seen him now, you wonder, will he ever, ever pray again? I've seen that bird. I begin to think, they're walking out in that field and all of a sudden, that boy goes, Mama, What's that? What, son? That bird, he's wounded. There's something wrong with him. Show me. Son, I don't see him. No, up on that limb. See him, mama? He's covered in blood. All of a sudden, that mama remembers what her daddy taught her. And she says, son, he ain't wounded. The leper's been cleansed. That's part of the ceremony. They let him go. He bears that iniquity. I mean, he carries that disease upon him of that leper. He's been let out into the field. That's a symbol. Amen. That a leper has been cleansed by the priest. Amen. Can you imagine? They walk back home hand in hand. Amen. That boy's head's bowed. All of a sudden over the hill. Amen. Over the hill. Amen. Maybe somebody's humming. Amen. Maybe somebody's whistling. Amen. That boy goes, Mama, that sounds familiar. Amen. What is it? Amen. Mama, that voice. Amen. That tune. I've heard it before. It's been a while. Amen. Since I've heard it. Oh, Mama, it's been a while. But could it be? Amen. Could it be? what I think it is. All of a sudden tears start falling down. Amen. That woman's face. As she says, I believe it is, son. I believe it is. All of a sudden topping that hill. Amen. Comes a daddy that's been cleansed. Amen. Can I tell you? Amen. There's still power in the blood of Jesus. Wouldn't it be great this morning? I said, wouldn't it be great if somebody comes to God? But how much more? I said, now I'll let the redeemed of God. I said, let the redeemed of God say so. Us that were outcasts. Us that had no part with our family. I remember the night. I said, I remember the night that I knelt down and the blood fell. I said, the blood came and a sinner came home. When we were child was born again. I wish somebody lift their hands and give God the praise for what it's done for us. Maybe you don't see it. I saw that bird. I know it's the blood of Jesus. I know it's the blood of Jesus. I thought, I walked in, tell my grandma I got saved. She said, don't even tell me. I already know. I said, who told you? She said, I found it in prayer. I heard it in prayer. I wonder what she was praying. And God showed her bird. I looked at that bird. Things were starting to pick up. I thought, what can wash away my sin? 
Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. Covered in spots. Chill with fever of pleasure. Dehydrated spiritually. Dying with no cure. Man had tried. Mama had tried. Daddy had tried. That night when I nailed, he stayed the plague. That's something to rejoice about. That's something to be excited about, saints of God. He stayed the plague in mine and your life. Stand to your feet. I reckon what I'm trying to tell you. I've been telling everybody this weekend, I listened to a tape, and I agree with it. I'm praying and reading about great men of God, how God used them. We are that vessel that God wants to use to carry the light. John said, I'm not that light, but I bear witness of that light. He wants to use us to carry the message of hope to eternity, to those that are lost and undone. Facing a godless eternity. So many times we get discouraged in our hearts. Says, does it help? When I saw that bird, PJ, I thought, Teddy can still come home. Mama can still go home. Neil. He not only cleansed the leper. Cleanse the house. There's hope. I said, there's hope. There's hope. Just don't lose it. Just don't get our eyes off of it. If we'll believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Let's come this morning. Let's pray. I don't know how to give an altar call, but I'm just asking you to come. I hope I got this across to you like I feel it.